Uh, I was just saying what I knew. Right. Now, that wasn't a revelation, that was what I was taught. He would come and he would start talking. They would start talking about prophet. And everywhere was silent and calm. Because the way he approached the scripture was totally different. None of us have seen the scripture that way. But I knew something was actually true to my music. My spirit right. was actually dropping something. Don't you think this is right? Mm -hmm. And I see no makeups. The ladies were so well dressed. And I was like, wow. Then these people must have something. Mm -hmm. There must be something in them that has made them this way. Right. right. But I still couldn't figure that out. I was still, I would call it exploring. Yeah. <laughs> God was still taking me on a tour to the message. So, after I walked in, the message, the, the church was over, I went home. Hmm, I was like, wow, nice people. Good. But I didn't even say anything about the message because I wasn't touched. I came the second time, nothing. Came the third time, nothing. I've come the fourth time, nothing. So, it was until one day I started... No, we all in the church mm -hmm. in Redeem started becoming sad, dissatisfied with the way things were going. Because there's these guest pastors who will come over to preach. When they visit, their preaching is totally awkward. Mm. So sometimes we prefer having the residence pastor to preach than having guest pastor coming in to preach. So these guys, when they come, they just preach and take you out. You want to have a focus. You want to serve God. Mm -hmm. But the way these people talk about the word, it's like God is as so cheap. The way they present God, they don't present God with awe and respect. Mm -hmm. So we were dissatisfied. Every one of us in that mini fellowship were dissatisfied. So we, don't, we, we started desiring God. And one of our prayers that time was, God, give us the truth. We want to know what is truth. We want to follow, we want to, want to know you more. Right. Show us yourself, Lord, and we pray earnestly with faith and confidence in God. And not too long the message came. And when the message started sweeping the whole rest of you, I was the first person after Steve who came to the church among us. Right, that's correct. So when I came, nothing. But when the two girls, when Lillian and Jumai came, they caught it. Yeah. And I'm very close to all of them. These girls caught this message. And Lilia, one day, called me and said, That's how church is supposed to be. I say, Yes. I say, I know you now you are joining them. Are you serious? She said, She, said she doesn't know. She just laughed. But I knew she was gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not quite long, not quite long, the both of them went to the church and took permission that they're leaving. And they left and they started coming to um, the Bible way. And when they started coming, I was still there. Stephen has gone, the two girls have gone, Juma and Lillian. So I was there, Fortune was there, and others also were there. Now this time, I was still in church, just you know, doing my normal thing and singing and thinking I was serving, my, serving God in that little way. Because usually the major thing is that if you if you do an activity in church, it means you're serving God. Yeah. But that's not, it's more than that. That's like going way back to what your dad oh, taught you. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, the same thing. Yeah. Just making you do act activities. We have activities upon activities, programs upon programs. Life has not been changed. The people come the same way. They, exactly. Oh, we spend money in organizing programs. Mm -hmm sit down and talk about programs and at the end of the day the people's life are not impacted right. nothing is actually happening in their life satan is just using this sure as a tool mm -hmm. to blindfold the people thinking that your know, revival is there yeah, but yeah. there's no revival because <laughs> when i came into the message i knew what revival was right i knew that revival without the word is no revival exactly <laughs> that you praying so much is no revival right so the idea was that when you pray so much, so hard, you pray and you start sweating, that is revival. <laughs> no. 
When I came into the message, that was when I understood that revival is actually the word of God being made real to you. Amen. Revelation upon revelation coming into your heart. Right. God taking you from where you are to where you've never <laughs> been before. <laughs> exactly. And that was revival. Yes, sir. So I never knew about this. So I was just thinking, oh, when I pray from 15 minutes, if I start praying 30 minutes, means I had revival. Or when I start speaking in tongues, although I didn't speak in tongues, though. <laughs> Some people will say, when you speak in tongues, that is revival. Oh, no, that's nothing. No, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, I was still there. The girls have gone. And I stayed in the church, still singing, still doing my own business. But there was this thing these girls usually do that caught me afraid, um, most especially Lillian. Lillian would come to the house, you know, we'd, I would just go to the house to sometimes relax and mm -hmm. eat. So when I went there, she usually do this funny kind of lifestyle that I was, I consider it to be funny. But then I was scared when she ever do, when she always do this. She would just come to the, to the, to the house and start shouting. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for showing me the truth. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. I was like, what is this girl talking about? I, uh, why is she calling Jesus to come? Why well, should be the one to call Jesus? She was so excited about the message. And she talks about it and chat about it. And when she keeps doing that, I was so, so, so afraid. Hmm. I was like, God, are you sure this girl? Why, why is this girl rejoicing this way? She was... I was getting scared every time I sit <laughs> close to her and she keeps saying, come Lord Jesus, I love you Lord, I love you Lord, I, I just love you, come Lord Jesus, thank you for making me your bride. I'm like, seriously. I, and this is Lillian that has never said those things whilst we were in within Christian church. Right. And right now she's saying these things. So I knew that something must have happened in this life. <laughs> yes. So, and, and I also watched Jumai too. Mm -hmm. And Jumai became so, so hard with the word. She became so different. Her approach and understanding of the scripture was different. Steve was already into it. Right. <laughs> he was, he was yeah, emerged <laughs> into it. And so when you meet him, he peels it open to you and takes you from year to year and drop and leave you where you, you would never imagine. So I was so excited listening to them. I was excited and at the same time afraid mm. because I knew I don't have what they had. And when they were calling God, come, God, come, Jesus, come. We, meet, Lord, we want to go home. Come, Lord Jesus. I was scared because there was nothing in me desiring God that way to come home. Mm. So I was back there in the church still doing my usual business. Now, it wasn't long. There was this guest preacher that actually came to preach. And when he came, he said some ridiculous thing that I knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. That was when I made my decision that I was going to leave the church. Now, he, made, um, he was saying, he was talking about how his church grew in number. And then he said, he said that they usually have this Christian party in the church, mm. in one of the church auditoriums. And that was how they used in getting more youth to the church. And that thing blew my mind off. Right. He said so many silly things that I think, you are a man of God. Do you have to teach God how to fit for himself? Mm -hmm. It's Jesus that told Peter, leave what you're doing. I will make you fish as of men. Right. It wasn't you, don't bring those ideas. And those ideas the man brought, I knew they were not of God. Although he had a name, mm. he had a position, he had his own church. So everything he brought that day upset me. And then I look at myself, I say to myself, Ibiye, if you need eternal life, run for your life. That was when I made my decision mm -hmm. that I was going to leave that church okay. and come into the message. Now, before that time, when these two ladies moved to Gloverdale, I started having, I started having concern mm -hmm. that why did these people leave? And then that was when I started looking into the message closely. 
I was forced to pray and ask God, God, right. help me to see what these people are saying. Right. I want you. You know I, I, I really want you. Mm. So God has to take them away yeah. so that I will pray and seek him. Exactly. So I started praying, asking God for mercy. God, please show me mercy. I want to know what the message is. And God started helping me. Mm. I started understanding the message. I would play. And I wasn't going to the seals. Right. I wasn't going to church ages. Mm -hmm. I was just playing all those other tapes he preached, like things talking about the blood, mm -hmm. things talking about Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, yeah. just all those messages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was just listening to those messages, and they were actually pointing me to Christ. Amen. And so one day, I was, I heard people, you know, when, you know, Juma and Lillian and Steve, they were one of the strong pillars in Redeem. So when they left, so many people were kind of consigned. And now why did they leave? And, you know, there were a lot of rumors going on. And I heard some of them. I wasn't caught up with whatever they said. Sure. But what I wanted was, you guys say something is wrong with the message. Can you people tell me what's wrong with the message? Because everything people were saying was that the message is wrong. Something the, at the end, it actually deviated. And I said, please, I want to know that part. Can you just show me where this man deviated? I want to know. And no one could actually say, look at what he said. It's ridiculous. This is the, he has actually deviated from this point. No one. But they were just telling me, I was just hearing, he preached. He was a prophet of God, yes. But at the end, he went out of the way and started doing something else. <laughs> I say, wow, okay, please, can you tell me what he actually did? Right. No one was able to give me an answer. I wanted to know exactly what is wrong with him. Where did he, what did he do so wrong that I shouldn't believe him? No answer. That was when I cut off from people's opinion. Right. I said I was going to make this decision myself. I started listening to the message. Now, when I listened to the message, I come out fresh. The mess if I open my heart to listen to the message, right. I come out so fresh. Mm -hmm. The message makes my heart new. But when I go back to church, something wasn't matching. It wasn't matching. There was huge discrepancy. So I say, wow. I couldn't flow again. I started losing appetite for the songs I was singing. Yes. <laughs> I started losing so many things. I started you know, withdrawing myself from so many things. And it was known. People started observing that. Me that will always be everywhere, yeah, yeah. be around people. I'm now cutting away. Because I couldn't feel them again. I, I felt things were not going right. There's something God is saying, I, and, and, and we are doing something actually different. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, let me just search what is in this message. I want to know what is in it. Amen. So I started following the message. Now, it got to a point, I got stuck. And then I said, okay, let me bring all the preachers I've ever known. Let me bring their messages. Mm -hmm. Let me bring their preaching, all what they have said. I brought it together. And I lay it side by side with the message. Right. None of them fit in. <laughs> That was when, bro, Tom, that was when I ever heard a man come out so bold and say, Thus says the Lord. Yes, sir. That, that word, oh, yeah, makes yeah. my day. <laughs> that word always makes, it always gives me the greatest confidence and assurance. Thus says, I've never heard man say that before. Right. So those words keep, it was like, I'm hearing God speaking directly to me. Amen. And then after every mess some, some, some of the messages, you will hear somebody prophesy, mm -hmm. and the other one interpret, and fit perfectly to the Bible. Right. How could you tell, how could you say you have a church party? And, and you, when you mean party, you mean party, not just getting together. I, it was just, this thing was so overwhelming in me. After that man left, I believe the entire programs we had in the church doubled. If you know yourself and you want God, fit yourself in to the message. 